Welcome to Install 110, High Availability Pairs and Multipath High Availability Cabling. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers, as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video, we learn what an HA pair is, what multipath high availability cabling is, and how that relates to HA pairs. Then we learn how to cable storage controllers and shelves into HA pairs with MPHA cabling. High availability pair concepts. If a single system experiences an error and crashes, all access to data on that system remains inaccessible until the system is repaired. By binding two systems together through software and cabling, it becomes possible for one system to do the work of both systems when one crashes. This is the essence of an HA pair. If you are unfamiliar with NetApp's cluster technology, a cluster is basically a collection of HA pairs that share their workload. Multipath High Availability Cabling Concepts In the Install 108 video, we cabled each controller to the dish shelf stacks that they will own from a hardware failover perspective. We connect two cables to each shelf stack for fault tolerance purposes. Now, we connect two more sets of cables to the shelf stacks owned by the partner in the HA pair so the shelves can be managed by the surviving partner if either partner fails. This can be confusing to understand due to all the terminology. In other words, node 1 is connected to dish shelves and node 2 is connected to dish shelves. We are going to connect node 1 to the shelves connected to node 2 and connect node 2 to the shelves attached to node 1. A beneficial side effect is we get load balancing of I.O or input-output traffic to the shelves. In this stylized diagram, we can see how the four cables connected to the shelf stack provide redundant pathways to both storage controllers so they can access the A and B path to every disk drive. For systems that do not share a common backplane, external cabling must be used to provide the interconnect necessary for the two controllers in the pair to share system state information. For three meters or less, copper cables are used. Fiber optic cables enable greater separation distances. For the FAS32 systems we are joining together in the video, we use two twin axe cables from Cisco. The HA interconnect ports on these FAS3200 systems are C0A and C0B, and they look exactly like a network interface, specifically a 10 gig interface. We plug a cable into C0A on the bottom controller to the C0A port of the top controller. We may have to flip the cable over to connect port C0B of the top controller to port C0B of the bottom controller. And then we do cable management to keep the cables out of the way. In the Install 109 video, we verify the cabling of the systems in a standalone configuration by running commands in maintenance mode. Now we will cable each controller to the partner's shelves. We can choose to do this while the systems are still in maintenance mode. We mirror the port connections of the first controller. On these lab systems, 0A is the primary and 0D is a return path. This ensures when a drive fails, both controllers report the same disk ID. Partner connections always go to the B shelf module of the first shelf in a stack. As always, we create service loops with the excess cables and perform cable management. We substituted the black Velcro strips with red Velcro to make cable tracing that much easier. The return path then comes from the A shelf module of the last shelf in the shelf stack. The cables are run along the right side of the cabinet to signify they are partner cable connections. 
We start by mirroring the port connections on the controller that owns the stack from a hardware perspective. The top controller connects to the square port of the BIO module of the bottom shell stack. Then we connect the return path from the storage controller to the circle port of the AIO module of the bottom stack. Next, we connect the bottom controller to the square port of the BIO module of the top shelf stack. Finally, we connect the return path from the circle port of the AIO module to the SAS HBA port. With the HA pair fully cabled, the next logical task is to complete the setup wizard to configure them as 7 mode or cluster data on tap systems. Software configuration is covered thoroughly in documentation and NetApp University courses, so is not included in the Building Block video series. The Install 111 video covers configuring the EOM management port and the service processor because they are important to proper system administration.